Hi, this is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. The Kotsk Rebbe, the Rebbe from Kotsk, he said that when Mashiach Tzidkenu will come, so he will go and tell the people, I am Mashiach. Part of his job will be to let people know that he is Mashiach. So the Kotzke Rebbe asked, but what are we going to do? There are many people that can claim that they are Mashiach to go between us and to tell us, I am Mashiach, I am Mashiach, I am Mashiach, I am Mashiach. Me, myself, I have at least 300 students that think that they are Mashiach. So what are you going to do now? So he said, how are we going to know the difference? He said, in the eyes of Mashiach, you will see that he desires Hashem with all of his heart. You will hear the voice that will come out from his mouth and it will be just different. It won't be the same. So, you see from that how everything depends in the intention of the heart. Into which place we're aiming our hearts, aiming our thoughts, and aiming all of our effort while trying and doing the best that we can serving Hashem. One step out of their swamps of sadness and depression, fears that surrounding them, anxieties, are not able to function, not able to work, not able to communicate, not able to laugh, not able to think. People are terrified, people closing themselves inside their own prisons, being their own prisoners. Don't let themselves speak, don't let themselves dream, don't let themselves think and, and hope. And not to talk about making changes in the world and uncovering the true potential of and despair. We belong in the heights. Our souls are the highest part of creation. <coughs> there is no one thing that came down to this world that came from a higher source than our souls. And our souls are not part of our being. It's not your link to the Creator. It's who you are. Your soul is who you are. When a person finished his tikkun in this world, passed away after 120 years, we're learning Mishnayot Le'ilui Nishmato. We are doing good things, learning, praying for the benefit of his soul. So where is he, if not his soul? We're praying that he will be now happy, will rest in peace, will find comfort and rest and joy and, and endless satisfaction. Who? He, that person, that guy, that woman, that friend, that parent. So he, she, they're that soul that they are. Now we have a problem. Why? Because we just received from the Yetzirah, from the evil inclination, mirror and cameras and, and, and people things to themselves, they are their own physical body and they're not relating their real existence and their real being to their soul. And they're finding themselves lost and confused misunderstanding themselves and don't know what to do with themselves at all. Only because that they are not understanding who they really are. The ones that we are, are spiritual beings with fantastic potential. <coughs> now the problem is that surrounding us are standing thousands on thousands of people that are holding in the same place that we're holding, with the same confusion, with the same problems, same distractions, same lack of knowledge, 
and they might be in our level or even worse and they will also gonna criticize us and also gonna praise us over our shapes and bodies and colors and heights and size and weights and they themselves are disconnected from their source of being from who they really are so by them being so disconnected from who they are they are talking to us like we are also physical creations like they think they are and now when they're coming to us and praising us on our physicality we relate it to our being and we think okay that's who I am I'm short I'm tall I'm beautiful I'm not I'm fat I'm thin I'm skinny I'm ill I'm sick I'm healthy I'm strong I'm powerful I'm whatever all those qualities are the qualities of your body it's not who you are now who are you that's the main question who we really are that's the main question now it's not a problem but for lazy people like us it can feel like a problem and that problem will be that no one can help you to know who you are no one can give you the answer because only you are you no one else is you everyone that have some kind of wisdom everyone that went through a similar experience like you did everyone in, in, in the same situation person that got knowledge person that is talented and wise righteous with a lot of life experience that kind of a person can give you advice and teach you about what he went through in his lifetime and can share with you from his life experience and he can tell you some things that he realized and understand in his lifetime and gonna tell you certain things that he went through in life but from all of those things you cannot achieve the complete picture and the complete knowledge about the essence and purpose of your life because you have a different path and you're driving on a different route and who that you are is the one that only you and the Creator know that you are. Now to know yourself, it might seem as a problem, but the truth is that if we will just focus in the voice of our souls, we'll take ourselves to a quiet place of self-awareness and just gonna listen to the inner voice of our soul. In the beginning, you might hear a lot, a lot of garbage, a lot, a lot of noise you can hear. Your confusions, your fears, physical noise of thoughts, of physical thoughts. What's gonna be? Who am I? Maybe I'm not gonna find. Maybe I'm gonna find something wrong. Maybe I'm misinterpreting. All the waste and nonsense of the daily thoughts can reveal itself in the first wave of spiritual information that will unleash itself from within but after the first wave suddenly you're gonna hear a little bit more and you can hear from your own inner thoughts and inner speech more and more information about your real being until that one day you will become so close to your true self that you and the Creator will be one in a way that you will be aware to the godliness that makes you be who that you are because you are part of heaven part of God because the Creator gave each and every single one of us a godly soul that it's part of heaven from above <laughs> He gave us a share of Himself within, inside of ourselves. You have godliness inside of you. God lives inside of you. The Creator lives inside of you like the verse is saying, I'm going to live inside of you. Inside of us. Betoch Ami, inside of my nation, inside of my people. 
Hashem is saying that He lives inside of us. And our hearts and all of our inner organs like the kidneys and the heart and the mind, the brain are talking to us as speakers, messengers of the Creator to call us to communicate with Him, to develop an inner relationship, lines and outlets and channels of wisdom, of communication in every sense of every word that you relate to. One can dance for Hashem like King David was dancing for Hashem. And one can sing and go to hide in a cave like that King David went to hide in a cave. Why one can be a huge leader and a king like King David he was a king. And also he can be a soldier and to fight in the war and to do that all for the Creator, for Hashem. Like King David, he was also a soldier and he went and fought the wars for Hashem. And like that every single part of your being, of the nature of your creation, is exactly as the Creator wants you to be, because He is the Creator of the world and He created you with His hands, as a result of His loving kindness on you, revealed His endless love and made you to be the one that He wanted you to be. And He made you after thinking and after planning and after consulting with the highest souls and after putting all of His mind and goodwill and mercy into the creation, He made you exactly the one that you are today with all of your qualities and with all of your... I don't know another word to say. Like, flaws. uniqueness. Flaws. Uniqueness. Flaws. Uniqueness what? means one of a kind. This person's saying flaws. Flaws. Like okay, mistakes. we'll, we'll flaws. flow with that. Flaws. 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 <laughs> Every part of who that you are, Hashem made you to be. He chose the colors, and He chose the weight, and He chose the sizes, and He chose the family, and He chose the house, the community, the friends, the hours, the exact day that you will come down to this world from the certain mother, a certain father, siblings in the same family, a certain apartment in a certain building, with a certain view, in a certain weather that fit to the secret of the purpose of your being. And He knew, and He still knows exactly who you should be. Our problem is that we are following the fears and opinions and criticism of people that are surrounding us, and those people are not holding in high levels that they will have the ability to guide us and to teach us. And that's why we're failing in their failures. Now think to yourself that your fears are not enough for you. And you see someone else that is terrified and you're walking toward him and ask him, Hey, what are you afraid of? What are you asking? You want to be scared too? You're going, please tell me, what are we afraid of? What we should be scared of? <coughs> he is a person that cannot find advice for himself. So from a person that cannot find an advice for himself, you cannot take advice. The only way that we can find advice from another person, it's only if that person nullified himself completely to the Creator and became all good, and now he and the Creator are one, and now that person is a righteous man, a righteous person, that he is all seed of truth, and every word that He will tell you will grow and rise good flowers and growings inside of you. Amazing developments and, 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 and good smells will, will wave in your spirit and you will be uplifted and you will rise because you met someone holy. But as long as you cannot find that inspiring lighthouse, person of truth, in a place that there is no man, you should be that man. In a place that you cannot find advice through a huge pillar of light, you need to find the light from within. 
Because when there is no one to help you, you must help yourself. When our nation was standing in front of the Red Sea, there were three righteous people that helped us to cross the sea, and by their merit, the sea been opened to the tribes to cross. One of them was Yosef the righteous man, Yosef at Sadiq. He passed away already before the time of redemption. And by the merit of His holiness, that He stand in huge tests in His lifetime, by the merit of His bed, of his purity, the sea was scared from that righteous man and opened itself for us to cross. Because we were part of his nation, part of his family. So by his merit, we crossed the sea. Second righteous man was Moses. He was a live righteous man, the leader of our nation in, our, in that generation. And when... He was standing over there and praying to the Creator. The Creator told him, yam Moshe, I'm opening the sea before of Moshe for the merit of Moses. And he told Moses, What are you screaming so much? You don't need to pray as much. Go and I'll open the sea for you. And our nation crossed the sea by the merit of the live righteous rabbi that lived with us in that generation third righteous man that by his merit the sea been opened for us was Nachshon praying and screaming he was part of the people he was with the people in that hour in that trouble in the time of their confusions and fears when all of our people Egyptians attacking from the back lions from the right side bears from the left the sea in front of them, and they don't have no advice. Even to surrender, they were not able to, because the Egyptians went and came only for one purpose, to kill. And they realized that they don't have no advice. Nachshon ben Aminadav took himself and started walking into the depths of the sea with no redemption and with no salvation in front of his eyes. Only his pure confidence and lack of other advice brought him to walk step after step, one step after the other, to the sea. And only when the water covered his mouth and he started coughing and choking from the salty water of the Red Sea, only then the Creator opened the sea for him. So the test of Nachshon ben Aminadav was so hard that even in that time that he took that decision and jumped into the water with his sneakers, with his jeans, with his iPhone, everything was in his pockets, his backpack, everything he had on him, and he's walking and walking and walking into the sea, and every step that he is making into the sea, and the water are rising and covering more and more and more, for him, the test is getting harder and harder. Why? Because he is keep on throwing himself into the water and the salvation is refusing to come. And when the water are here and here and here, still there is no sign for redemption and he is about to drown. That's at least the negative thoughts of his evil inclination that are attacking him in every moment and moment that he's throwing himself and sacrificing literally for all of our nations. All of our nation. And this is the test that we are standing in. Because sometimes by the merit of that huge righteous man that you believe in, one believes in the merit of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, one believes in the merit of the Lubavitch Rebbe, one believes in the old um, the Bala, the, the Bala Tanya, one believes in Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, everyone believes in the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, in Moses, in our ancestors. Sometimes you see that you scream and scream and scream, and there's no answer. And even you say by the merit of our ancestors, and you find yourself lost and stuck and confused. And you know, in that moment you said to yourself, okay, 
there are righteous people in this generation. I'm going to call them. I'm going to go knock on their doors. And they're trying. And you're walking. And you're going. And sometimes, even when you go to a live righteous man, you cannot see the salvation coming in the speed that you want it to come. And you can find yourself lost and stuck five minutes before Shabbat, Five minutes before of the meeting, five minutes before of need to take your kids out of kindergarten and you're stuck in traffic and there's no rabbi in the world that is helping you and there is no righteous man in heaven that is assisting you. At least you cannot see their merit opening your path, opening your road and you need to jump into the water on your own. And you should become like Nachshon Ben Aminadav. And you know what? The magic thing in all of that is that the level of Nachshon Ben Aminadav, that he was, so to speak, the lowest level of those three righteous ones, he was not Yosef HaTzadik, he was not Moses, he was Nachshon Ben Aminadav, an amazing person, but only Nachshon Ben Aminadav. His level was actually higher than the rest. Why? Because even when Moses is praying to Hashem and screaming and begging to open the sea, Hashem was rebuking him and told him, Why are you praying? Tell Am Yisrael to walk into the sea already. Exactly what the Nachshon Ben Aminadav was doing. The understanding and the assumption of Nachshon Ben Aminadav was a straight mind. That was the real will of Hashem. That you will throw yourself into the depths of the sea. And today, when we're finding ourselves under 50 gates of Tumah, of impurity, suffering from plagues and distractions and bad attributes and fears, anxieties and depression and being threatened from all sides, and cannot find rest to our feet, to our bodies, to our mind. People are afraid to go to sleep, not able to close their eyes. After one second closing their eyes, dead, tired, terrified from their own thoughts, must turn on their iPhone and watch another video, search another stupid, silly thing on Facebook. Cannot deal with their thoughts. Suffering from such pain and trauma. Been hurt and abused and molested so many times. Been destroyed, been hurt, wounded, scarred, burned to ashes in our life and standing on our feet and keep on pushing forward and not backing up and not giving up. Those are the holiest souls, the strongest souls of them all. Those are the souls that will bring redemption. Those are the souls that the Creator will rebuke the righteous people and will tell them to follow those souls. Our souls. The broken souls. The souls that cannot find advice from themselves. Also from the huge pillars of our nation. And also from the live righteous ones that are walking between us. And must deal with reality in life. In real time. Struggles of financials, struggles of opinions, struggles of characters, struggles of, 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 of sicknesses of our spirits and our emotions. And dealing with the loss and the pain and the effort and keep on dragging ourselves with faith and pure confidence to the Creator. To connect yourself to the Creator is the most most simple thing in the world, and I'll tell you how and why. A student of mine sent me a message, told me I'm learning for hours every day, and I'm so far from Hashem. I'm praying, I'm going to pray in a minyan, in a group, in a synagogue. I'm doing so much, and I'm so far from Hashem. I can understand him, but he is all wrong. He thinks that he's far from Hashem. You don't know your closeness to Hashem. Your closeness to Hashem not depends in you. It depends in the loving kindness, in the endless love of the Creator to His creations. It not depends in you. The world is full with His honor. The world is full with His Spirit. There is no place that Hashem is not there. 
How can you be far from Hashem if you are part of Hashem? Chelek eloka miman. If you're his child, if you're his brother like that he's calling us, brothers, if you and him finding yourselves equal in a way, in his eyes, from his point of view. That the verse is saying, Ki If you see the animal of your brother, and the Orachayim HaKadosh is explaining that when you walk in the path of your life, and you see people that fell from level of humans, and they're acting like animals, and they belong to your brother. Who's your brother? The Orach Haim HaKadosh, that was in the level of the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh. He said, your brother, Dakut Shabrichu, it's the Creator Himself. He's your brother. You know what it means that He's your brother? That you are one. That you're equal. And it doesn't make you God that you can create and that you can decide and start in a silly way idolizing yourself. It's to be humble like that the Creator is humble. And it's to be good like that the Creator is all good. And to reveal the inner mercy and the inner kindness and the inner generosity and all the good qualities that the Creator treasured inside of you, reveal them to the world. With no despair and with no sadness and never give up, no matter which darkness you find yourself in. Moses was the man of God and he was able to go into the darkness, into the clouds, into the flaming fire, between the lightnings and the thunders and boulders that were shooting out from the mountain, into that darkness. Because he saw that Hashem was there and he didn't die. Not because he was Moses, because Hashem was there. And Hashem is with you in your darkness exactly like that he was with Moses. Moses became special because he put all of his effort, all of his guts sacrifice himself to the Creator. And if you will sacrifice the same, you will become the same. We don't understand the potential of our souls. You don't recognize the beauty of your creation. You are a child of God. Banim! Atem l'Hashem elokechem, you're the children of the Creator. Have you ever saw a, a deer comes out of a cow, born out of a cow? Have you ever saw a leopard comes out of a lion? It's not exist. From the Creator coming down, holy souls in the holiness of the Creator. Just that we are trapped in physicality. That's the only difference between us to Him. Higher water and lower water. Same water, different location, different place. He is over there and He is still in His unity. He is still one and connected to Himself completely, to infinity and to all of what that He is that we cannot describe from our prison. And we've been exiled to a physical prison, cave, dungeon, darkness, that we barely can see through the cracks. But if we will not surrender, and going to put all of our power to expand those cracks, and to break those walls of sadness and depression to discuss. It's the redemption and the salvation that is about to come. Days of Mashiach are right now. You don't know where you're holding. You don't know where you're sitting, where you're standing, with who you're talking, who you're listening to, who you see in the street. You don't know anything about yourself and you don't know anything about the ones that are surrounding you. You don't have a clue who you are and who is surrounding you. You don't know if you already met Elijah the prophet. 
You don't know if you saw King David. You don't know if you are one of the children of King David in this generation. You don't have a clue who you are. You don't know if you have sparks from the soul of Sarah, of Rachel, of Rivka, of Leah. You don't know if you have parts of the soul of Esther the Queen, of Mordechai Yehudi. You don't know who you are. You don't have a clue who you are. Even huge righteous people that we cannot understand their greatness were completely unaware and unknown, couldn't recognize and didn't know who they were in the secret of their creation. Rabbi Chaim Vital, the student of the Ariya Kadosh, he didn't know who he was. He didn't know anything about himself. He was complaining and crying to his rabbi, to the Ariya Kadosh, and told him, I'm so low, I'm nothing, I'm worthless, I don't, I'm not important, why are you praising me? And on, and he was crying on who that he was, on who that he felt that he was. And the Arya Kadosh told him, listen, you are the light of this generation. I came only to teach you. You are the hope of the next generation. You can become a Shiach, you can deliver the light of Hashem. And he couldn't get it. He was in a level that was not able to accept those words. And he couldn't believe in himself. Because he found different, different things in his life that shown to him that he was holding in a low level and not in the level of those righteous ones that the Ariya Kadosh is comparing him to. And he came to the Ariya Kadosh and he's telling him, listen, but today I failed in anger. Today I was screaming at my friend in the field. We were walking together and there was an argument between us and I shouted on him. And I was screaming, look, I failed. I know myself, I failed. The Ariya Kadosh told him, you know what's your problem? Your problem is that you think that they're judging you in heaven in the way that you judge yourself. But you don't know that you are in the root of the soul of Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva ben Yosef. And in the secret of lifetimes, in the way that the soul of Rabbi Akiva, that he was a son of convert that came from that nation and came in the... And the Ariya Kadosh start open for him the heaven and the secrets of souls, how they're coming down in different lifetimes and rolling over and over again and again to this world and with different particles of spirit and, 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 and soul. And in the secret of that soul that you are today dressed in that body, you, when you fail in anger, is an obvious thing that will happen to you and you are not being judged on that anger at all in heaven. And that failure that you had today in heaven eyes doesn't mean anything. It's nothing. You just need to move on. I have students that are calling to me crying. You don't know what I have done. I messed up. I did this and I did that and I failed in this and failed in that. I, I, like, it's not that I'm not listening, but I don't need to hear it. It's all nonsense because it doesn't matter at all. If your final decision is to work on yourself, now let's work. I will hear him to give him my shoulder to lean on me, to count on me, that he will have a friend. But the truth is that I don't need this information because that information doesn't change and doesn't matter. Because we all are here in the depths of the exile and you know why it's dark outside? Because Hashem turned off the light. It's not dark because you messed up. It's dark because it's night time. That's why it's dark. If you will fix yourself, you think it's going to be light right now? No, it's night time. We are now in, still in the time of the exile. And it's dark. And you can be a pillar of light. And you're going to maximum illuminate to your house. Maximum to your neighborhood. To your synagogue. Maximum. I am screaming like a crazy person and screaming and screaming for years I'm screaming and I'm reaching out to 50,000 people a month. It's a huge number, right? You know how tiny it is compared to the number of souls that are out there? It's a joke. It's a joke. 
It's not 1% of the people that I need to reach out to. And I can scream my lungs out and I can bleed to death, Chas Shalom, and it's not going to help. Only when Hashem will turn on the light, there will going to be light. When He will say, it will become, it will happen. When He will decree, when He will decide, when He will say, when He is saying, Yehi Oh, they're going to be light, they're going to be light. Yehi Oh. It's a result of His speech. We can scream and we can talk, but He, Yosheb Bashamayim, the one that sits in heaven, He's got His wisdom. And he's got his plan. And he knows exactly what he's doing. Bringing all of us to a certain point that we will be able to receive the light in a perfect way that there will be no one left behind. No one. If the redemption is supposed to come in a couple of hours from now, let's say so, if it will come now, so at least... 2,000 people won't be able yet to enjoy the light. But if we will wait for them another couple of hours, everyone will be redeemed. If it needs to be in a year from now or three months from now, if we will wait patiently, calmly, just going to pray a little bit more, try to strengthen ourselves and our surroundings a little bit more, we will all be redeemed together. As one person with one heart because we're all one soul. And there is no way, I'm telling you, there is no way in the world that the Creator will bring the redemption one moment before we will all be ready to be redeemed. Because the Creator will never leave wounded people in the field, in the battlefield. He will never going to leave prisoners in the hands of the evil inclination, in the hands of the devil. The Creator is a merciful Father and He will redeem us all. And He woke me up from complete darkness. And he woke many of my beloved ones from complete darkness. And He came out of the blue, out of nowhere and started communicating with us through His individual supervision, sending miracles and wonders and messages to our lives to show us, I am the one that is running the show. There is a king to the creation. It doesn't run by itself. And from that fact, because of that fact, that he chose people like us, that they're being called today Balei Tshuva, People that were completely lost and He gave answers to our questions and He woke us up from within. That's the strongest and most powerful evidence for His being and existence in the world. Now based on that, counting on that, seeing the wonders and the miracles of the Creator, revealing His godliness and His endless love to His children, based on that, I am sure and 100% confident that we just need to move forward and to continue our great activity. And except of that, there's nothing else we can do and should do. There's nothing else that needs to be done. Except of trying to dedicate our lives as much as we can while keeping our sanity and our joy and the level of happiness of us in the highest place of them all as much as we can to keep ourselves loving and caring and sensitive to ourselves and to our surroundings to become one and to care and to love as much as we can this is the mission of our life and more than that there is nothing else to do and to judge and criticize yourselves on who that he made you to be it's a mistake it's showing your lack of faith your lack of understanding in his greatness in how beautiful he can create the world which animal you love the most I love squirrels if the world would be full with only squirrels it would be boring Boring. Only squirrels? Boring. Amazing. Cute animal? Boring. Only deers? Boring. Only lions? Boring. Only the fact that the creation is so colorful and every individual is different and so unique 
gives the creation its real beauty. So the fact that you are different doesn't make you lower than someone else. The reason that you have low self-esteem is because that you follow other people's opinion and methods and ideas but they are not people that are able to guide you and to give you advice that will give you life, that will connect you to reality, to the truth, to Hashem. If you want to connect yourselves to Hashem, like I said before, it's the most easiest thing in the world. Hashem Elokechem Emet. Your God is the God of truth. You need to connect yourself to the truth. Not to the divine truth of beyond, no. To reality. The truth is that you're trying, so it's the truth. You are trying. The truth is that you failed and you messed up, so it's the truth. You failed, you messed up. Make a phone call, set a meeting, go apologize, do tshuva, regret, fix yourself. Work on your lackings, on your bad attributes, and be happy and glad with your qualities and with the wonderful things that Hashem gave you, no matter who you are in your eyes. To judge yourself in a negative way, it's to judge the creation in a negative way. You misinterpret the intention of the Creator to make the world beautiful and colorful. You are exactly who Hashem wants you to be. Who you are. You cannot change who you are. You are who you are. That's reality. All the rest of the options are not real options. Those are fake illusions. Fake imaginations. I want to be. I will become. Nonsense. Fake dreams false dreams. Who are you? That's the answer for your life. Now what should I do? What do you want to do? Do you want to do good? Do you want to be good? Be good. Be nice. Express your heart. Love. Care. Listen. Support. Give a hand. Give a shoulder. Do what that you feel that your heart wants you to do and then the light of the Creator will shine through <coughs> you and you won't hold back the redemption. You won't hold back the light of Hashem that He treasured inside of you. One should go and teach. One should go and talk. One should go and sing. One should go and pray. One should go and work to stabilize his house and his family and to pay tuition. Tuition seek tuition for his children to go to school. Everyone should take responsibility on his life and to understand that he is here on a mission, a great one. You might don't see it all, you might don't understand it all, but you need to believe that it's all been planned and well designed by the Creator, the Almighty. And he is able and have the power to make all the changes that are really needed and required for our success. So we just need to humble ourselves, not to break ourselves, to accept real yoke of heaven, the real faith of the existence of a divine spirit of the Creator, that runs the show, and to try to become the part that we are in His creation. Just to be. And then you nullify yourself to the Avaya Baruch to the name of Hashem Yidbarach, that runs the world in the present. That the meaning of Hashem Avaya is that He is here with us. He is the Holy Present. He is the now. He is the reality. He is who He is. And you, when you will be who you are, you will be one with who He is. And you and Him will be one. Live eternal life in a temporary world.
Good? Sounds good? Perfect. Emuna.com is a wonderful website. You can visit us on I hope home. you enjoy this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit emuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.